Hi guys, good morning and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in today's video, I'll be discussing what I thought of the latest and very exciting episode of Star Trek Prodigy. Now, before I begin, of course, you know, obviously spoilers ahead, this is a spoiler-filled episode review, so if you're not caught up on Star Trek Prodigy by today's episode, the most recent one, you don't want to keep watching or listening as I will be discussing spoilers. But I also wanted to take the opportunity to I guess correct myself because I was under the mistaken impression that next week is the season one finale when I believe it is actually the season one part one finale because I guess they split this first season into two halves of 10 episodes each. So the next episode will be the season one part one finale, not the true intended season one finale. That will be dropping at a later point uh, this year at some point. I don't know when exactly. No exact premiere date uh, as of yet for uh, part two of season one of Star Trek Prodigy, but I guess that's how they're formatting these episodes. I don't know. I was just under the mistaken impression this was just a 10 episode season, but it's actually 20. So that's fine with me. It's more Star Trek. But I just wanted to correct myself in case there was any confusion. So, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about um, episode nine. So let's talk about that. You know, I got to say, it was really great to see them embrace their Starfleet identity now, you know, because they had kind of uh, convinced themselves that's what they already kind of were, even because they fully intended to head to the Federation. But it, um, I also love how they just put on the uniforms as well and how approving Janeway was of that as well. And I wasn't too surprised that, um, you know, it was part of, they anticipated the Diviner double-crossing them when they made their original deal or two deals with them. So I wasn't surprised at all about that. Like, when he sent something within Quinn, I'm like, mm, this has got to be part of the ploy, I bet. Like, everything that had happened prior to them taking off in the Protostar was all part of their plan. And sure enough, it was. Because I was like, where the hell is Murph? Oh, there he is. Oh, and he's got the thing that makes the Protostar ship actually work. Smart. So I loved how these characters know their enemy well enough. And Quinn obviously knows her dad pretty well. I like how these characters are smart enough to know their enemy well enough in order to fairly uh, accurately anticipate his moves or actions. And I think that really paid off here because so far the plan seems to be working. Like he knocked out their life support, I guess, or the power generator of the ship he originally promised to them. But I guess they're going to fix it or restore it so they can get all the miners out of there. So that's good of them. Now, hopefully they can turn around they can hurry up and get to it before the protostar comes back and starts shooting laser beams at him. But uh, this episode had some great character beats throughout. Like, even the villains had some great beats. Like, Dreadnought, the robot, is trying to be as smart as possible about this. And obviously, he does not trust Quinn at all. And he keeps trying to convince his boss, his master, that it's a bad idea taking her along. And obviously, I think he was proven right here. But Diviner does have a little bit of a soft spot for her. whatever humanity he's got in him even though he's not human he's an alien but like whatever you you know what I mean by humanity he does have a very small soft spot for his daughter at least that'll probably change change once now that he knows that they kind of double crossed him and took the one thing that the ship needs to operate <laughs> I also like evil Janeway or not really evil but reprogrammed Janeway to look much darker and more sinister like her newfound captain uh the diviner so that was a pretty cool uh visual imagery there for Janeway but it obviously probably won't last long and the ending kind of caught me off guard because, you know, it was one of those deals where I was enjoying the episode so much as it continued to go along. I'm like, oh, this is getting good. And then, of course, it ends right as the excitement boils over. You're like, oh, shoot, it's a two-parter. Oh, well, we got something to look forward to next week. But, no, this is a good episode. I, I really liked it a lot. I'm looking forward to the um, season one part one finale, which is next Thursday. And no idea as to when... Uh, the rest of the season will drop. I guess there's another 10 episodes to go. Yay. Um, no idea when that's going to happen. 2022 is going to be a very full year for Star Trek in general. I mean, Star Trek Picard Season 2 drops March 3rd. The new show, Star Trek Strange New World Season 1, drops May 5th, my birthday. And uh, Star Trek Discovery returns with new episodes uh, next month, February 10th. And that show just got renewed for a fifth season. 
So this is going to be a very full packed year for Star Trek in general. So I'm not sure when the second half of season one of Prodigy will return, but it's probably going to be at some point during a hiatus or one of the many shows I mentioned ends its current season run. So we'll see, but there'll be no shortage of Star Trek to enjoy. That's for sure. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. What did you think of it? I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings on it. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome rest of your day. And don't forget to check in next week for the season one, part one finale of Star Trek Prodigy. Have an awesome rest of your day, everybody. Thanks for watching. And of course, until next time, live long and prosper.